Hello, everyone on the Sacred Spaces site. I just wanted to say hello today on November 24th, 2021, one day before Thanksgiving in the United States. And as I reflect on the Thanksgiving, I just want to say that I am so thankful for everyone on this in this group and all the support that I have gotten over the last few years as I go down this sacred spaces journey with you. And today I really wanted to focus on the sacred spaces journey and, and what that means to me and hopefully give you encouragement as you proceed on on this kind of different pathway than, than a lot of equestrians have gone down before. So as you probably know from experimenting with a lot of things that this is not a given. Everything that I, I tell you about and that you experiment with, you may have some, some setbacks or some discouragements or things don't seem to work out all the time the right way. And, and the only thing I can tell you is that this is not an easy journey. It was not an easy one for me, and I've done it for probably about four decades. And over that time, I got a lot of rejection and a lot of rejection about what I was saying, what I thought, how I was doing things. And I feel that those same rejections are coming to a lot of you as you proceed down. And I, I just hear it from a lot of people that I work with. It's like, I have to do this work in private because everybody thinks I'm a nut or they don't understand what I'm doing. And so they make fun of me or they tell me how to do it the right way. And it, it is a very difficult process to, to weed out those people and, and to, listen to their voices and hear them and, and know you acknowledge them, but that you are on a different journey. And that's where I had to go in my journey along this, this path is so many people telling me I was doing it wrong. And, and I would take it so personally and I would feel like because I was the only one out there kind of in my area doing things differently, that there was something wrong with me. But I, in my gut and in my heart, I knew it was the right way to do it. And that's all that I ask any of you. If you feel like it's hard and you're questioning it, just ask your heart and just ask your gut. And those two brains, as you know from reading my book, will tell you the right answer and whether it's right for you. And I used to, like I said, I used to take a lot of people's rejection personally as I told them about this work or I would do things with them. And, and if they rejected my way of explaining things or doing things with the horses, I would take it so personally. And then I would go off and, and just kind of hide for a while and, and try to lick my wounds and then come back. And, and I used to think, well, the reason they reject me is because I'm not explaining it right, or I haven't done enough research, or I haven't, I've failed in some way to articulate what I'm doing and convince them of the validity of it. And really, I had to get over myself because that was about my ego coming through and saying, well, we'll do it my way. You know, it, well, don't you guys get it? And now I understand that it's just the right way for a few people. And I can't control that. I can't do anything about whether or not they're ready or if they wanna go down this more difficult path because on this path, why a lot of people reject it is because they've got to look at themselves very deeply and look at where they may not be the best human for their horse, where they could improve on themselves, where they could become more present where they could just be a better human being. And, and it's hard for all of us to look at our flaws or, or the things that maybe somebody else sees that we don't wanna look at. And as you guys all know, the horses are so good at looking at us as who we really are and we can't fool them. And that's what this sacred spaces journey is about is we are trying to get so that we don't have to fool the horse or think that we're fooling the horse, that when the horse comes up to us and looks at us, it sees who we really are. 
and we know who we really are. And I had the opportunity last night to uh, do a virtual session with uh, someone in their horse. And what's really interesting on those virtual sessions, at the end, he came up and he positioned his head right so that he was looking right into the camera. And I've had this happen a lot of times with horses. It's, it's like they look at me as an anomaly, maybe perhaps like, what's in there and it's so just there it's so authentic it, you know when i'm with the horses it's so authentic and they will just stare at me in that space and it feels like wow they're just going wow this is really interesting person not like a lot of the others i've seen where there's a lot of static and the horses that have done that to me in the most intense way are actually mustangs I've had them come up and just do the most intense stare at me. And I felt like, wow, they're looking at my soul. And if they don't move away, then I can feel like, wow, maybe there was something valid about my soul or that they felt okay in my presence. And, and so those kind of experience to me are what make this sacred spaces journey worthwhile despite all the setbacks, despite all the hard work, everything else is when that horse looks at you in that way that makes everything worthwhile. And, you know, for so many years, I, I thought about, well, what I do, I'm such an outlier. I'm an outlier. And in statistics is where that you know, I came from that research thing and we did statistical analysis. And we always well, often came across these data sets where there would be an anomaly. There would be a data point that fell so far outside the norm that we couldn't explain it. And it would make us as stati statisticians kind of nervous, like, what do we do with that? It exists, but do we ignore it? Do we somehow manipulate the data to make it fit into our, our data set, our normal data set? And now, as I'm coming out of that academia and all that kind of research and everything, I'm looking at, isn't it amazing when there's an outlier? When we as a group of people are outliers from the norm and we are doing something completely different and nobody can explain it yet and it doesn't fit in the norm, but I'm hoping at some point that it does start to become more of the norm and it does fit into how people are thinking and how people are approaching training courses and, and training themselves. Because as you know, the sacred spaces journey, it does have a component of the horses, which I'm going to touch on over time here, but the biggest component is us on this journey and how do we change and how do we become better humans? And that was really my underlying goal from coming from the world of horse training to realizing that there's more to this and where could we take ourselves and become better horsemen, but actually become better humans at the same time. And that's my goal here. And so if you're on this journey, thank you for being an outlier. It's a lonely place sometimes, but I can tell you, it takes people and this world to a different place and we need our outliers. We need those people that think outside the box. And uh, thank you for doing that. And everyone who is in the United States and are uh, celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow, happy Thanksgiving to all of you and to all of the other people around the world that maybe don't celebrate our U United States um, holiday. I just would like to wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving because I'm thankful for all of you. So until the next time, take care, have a wonderful holiday, and I will see you soon. Thank you.